Hello, welcome to America's Podcast. If this is your first time listening, thank you and welcome to the show. The number one subscribed cannabis podcast on iTunes and Spotify. In this episode, we actually don't talk a whole lot about cannabis. This episode, we really help you get to know your host a whole lot better. Ray and I have our good friend Gregor Kafaro in the studio on this episode, and you'll hear him talk as well. So here's what we talk about. We talk a lot about some real life shit, some inspirational stuff, and some thought provoking stuff as well. For instance, we get into what does an old soul mean? Abortion, vibes versus raw papers. How is it working in the cannabis industry? The history behind Blue Dream, and where does 420 come from? We also get into Weed for Warriors and Santa Cruz Veterans Alliance, which these are veteran-based cannabis companies that give out medicine to veterans in need. I talk some good life habits on sleep, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi radiation. We talk natural disasters and if California is going to fall in the ocean or not. What you need to know or what you need in your emergency kit, a.k.a. your go bag, brought to you by Gregor, a Marine veteran. He knows a lot about that stuff. We talk about Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and how you can basically be whatever gender, gender you want to be to join. Confusing world we live in. We also talk birth control and not having enough struggle in the current society. Lastly, our high thoughts bring us to discussing what it would be like to live on another planet and what Space Force is doing. So, not too much cannabis in this episode, but mark my words, you will not want to miss this one. Cheers, y'all. Thanks for listening. We're smoking this right now because we are. What are we smoking on, Ray? <laughs> Kim. We are smoking on a THC A diamond infused pre roll by Nug. Premium Jack. I'm about to light up another one. You have another one? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Whoa. Evil. So, our guest Evil. on today's episode is Gregor Cavallo. Gregor. <laughs> A Marine veteran. <laughs> <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> he was also on episode 27. We're lit. This episode's going to be lit because we're not talking really anything specifically cannabis. It'll probably come up because that's what we do every day. <laughs> um, but it's just going to be about life bullshit and banner. Here we go. Yep. Because we're getting high. Just. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean, though, by saying you're an old soul? Like, what do you... He likes old music. That's why he thinks he's an old soul. Negative. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. No, it's okay. Um, What I mean by old soul. So, I just, um, I like, I love nature a lot. I love things that don't require, um, you don't require a lot. I don't know. It's a... You're more like low maintenance, you're saying, with like you're not... Environmentally friendly? Old soul. I don't know. Just like... The upbringing, fuck, it's, it, this is hard for me to explain. It's a great question, right, to be honest. Hmm. Because some of your ways are conservative, like you still believe in, like, the old way of doing things, like the simple life kind of thing. Like, let's say, for instance, <clears throat> this is a weird example, but it just popped up. Disciplining your kids. A lot of people don't, <laughs> don't like, want to, like, I don't know, discipline their kids. They feel bad. Well, you, you yeah, need to true. be the parent. Okay. For instance, I don't have a freaking kid, so I shouldn't speak very highly on that topic. But that's just the old soul. I, I'm mm-hmm. like, my grandpa taught me how to woodwork. I really thoroughly enjoy that. Um, it's it's stuff like that that just I don't know. It's the it's the simple things that definitely make me happy. Hanging out with my friends, you know what I'm saying? Like, not necessarily being on like social media, even though I am on there a lot. Like that doesn't necessarily make me happy. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm an old soul like that, where I'm, I'm I really appreciate human connection. I appreciate nature. Um. Yeah, I'm, if I can think better on how no, to explain it. No, that's great. It. That's a great explanation of it. Yeah. So, but I mean, also, I do have some crazy, <laughs> radical, I guess, different opinions, and it doesn't make me super. But old you're soul. right. You do have the balance, so. For sure. Like I, I've told people, my midlife crisis. I want to <laughs> move out in the middle of nowhere. Have cell phone service once a week when I go up to the top of the hill. Have a huge self-sustainable farm. Um, huge garden. Live out in the middle of the woods with my family, raise the kids, you know. And you're right, like some people growing up today probably don't think about that. They might want a totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, not, I like, like I said, nature. I like being in the woods. I like doing that shit. So, not a lot of people do, I guess. But 
Yeah. I'm going to spark up another one of those diamond pre rolls. Cool. I have the dabbler and then the peak too. Oh, so what are we sm- <coughs> smoking on the peak? Explain. Stop Stop coughing in the mic, Gregor. I know you're new. It's okay, buddy. But I can get on to you like that because he's another Marine, so I can speak to him like another Marine. And believe and I me. I won't cry. Yeah, believe me, that's <laughs> raw. Just like the big green weenie. Semper Fidelis, don't be jealous. <laughs> Oh, man. I have strawberry banana loaded in the, <laughs> in the peak. Ray's nice, pleasant voice. <laughs> it's live resin sugar. Soothing. Yes, very. Very. Live resin sugar. Yeah. Sugar. Can I put in some sugar, sweet potato? Sugar. Hey. You are my candy girl. You know more than me. Sugar, sugar. <laughs> That's all I know. Does all that right. make me an old soul? <laughs> Do you think you're one? I, I think based on your upbringing, you definitely, you do a lot of shit that a lot of other people don't do your age. I mean, a lot of people do think it's cool. I just like certain things. Like my dad grew up with like loving cars and mm-hmm. we would go to like races, dirt track, NASCAR, any kind of race, like just street racing, all that. So, I mean, I know how to change my oil, obviously, like things like that. She does that, actually. And can drive stick like, shift. Stick shift, yeah. Very well. Good. Fluently. That's a good trait. <clears throat> <laughs> Honestly, it's okay if we cough a little because we've been smoking. No, it is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's going to happen. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> but just... we, f- we fuck with you when, like, with his car and stuff, with how he's so particular about everything, which is mm-hmm. like, you know, good and bad. You don't want to be crazy, that. but you're definitely like OCD. And like anytime there's anything like rattling noise wise, like what's in the cup holder? What's this? Like, I can't be hearing a rattling. That could so be we annoying. always fuck with him about like easy on the seat. Cause we're like getting out of his car, closing the door. He's like, easy, easy on that. I'm, easy on this. I don't do this all the time. Believe me. But, but we were talking about it earlier, how you're like, I can kind of like see some of my dad and me. And maybe was, is that how you were kind of brought up to like to be? Cause my dad was like, with the AC and stuff like that. Like, we would always turn it down really low. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Who was messing with this and that? Oh, so, yeah. you know, it's like I'm very conscious of certain things. Mm-hmm. That's funny you mentioned the AC. Um, I would say, I don't know. Yeah, my dad definitely taught me like that. Like, I, I, I make fun of him because he taught me to be a cheap ass, which is a, <laughs> which is a, good. Which is a good thing. For Let me tell you why. Now, to my extent, I think the Marine Corps made me OCD more about it. Even in high school, I was particular mm-hmm. about my shit. But here's the thing: is like he did teach me to be a cheap ass, and I, I I believe this is a good thing because I keep my shit that I have that I bought and worked hard for really good. I, I keep it, it lasts really. A while. I keep it really maintained, whether it's a tool, a car, a light, like and any anything, um, any material. I try to keep it in the best condition for as long as possible, and I'm really particular and it. And, it gets to me and it's it's like Ray saying it is OCD I do it is like it fucks with my emotions sometimes when things are like out of place because the Marine Corps let's say for instance a tool was misplaced in the toolbox and it wasn't it wasn't in the right place or something even in the fleet they'll fucking chuck the tool they'll like I can't even I don't even want to tell you this shit on to the whole world, but because yeah. we're the fucking hardest branch in the goddamn world, but uh, hey, Ray, I, Semper Fidelis. I can't really say everything, but three one. But some of the things you've been through have made you that way. Made me that <laughs> way for sure, but almost to a bad extent, right? So, but no, I, I, I think that also kind of makes me an old soul too, because I feel like a lot of people think a lot of shit's like dispensable, <coughs> or their parents bought it for them and shit. Yeah, like, and they don't care about it. My mom used to make me pull tons of weeds days worth in the florida hot sun you know everyone's gonna have their stories but yeah for real and like then you know i didn't even have a phone in my time (laughs) around until i was like probably at least seventh grade i think that's pretty i think that's pretty good for emergencies you know that's what i'm saying but nowadays i think i I was a freshman little kids we have an ipad it was uh 14 i was 15 15 Yep. Did you graduate when you were 19 or 18? 18. But I even, yeah. mine was just a little prepaid phone. I had a prepaid phone all the way in college. <laughs> and Virgin then my Mobile. youngest sister got an iPhone. I was like, what? <laughs> what is it come to? Like, the fuck? 
Hey, you know what? You know what my dad teach me? <laughs> did teach me extremely well. Like he, he was, a, I see a lot of myself in him. That's crazy. He was a great man. He definitely helped. Like good upbringing for sure. I'm, I'm very blessed. Um, but yeah, my parents were divorced, so that was definitely difficult. But he taught me a trait that is I I love, and I'm definitely teaching my kids, which is perseverance, and just being able like, just in like maintaining cars, like fucking shit breaks and it's fucking difficult and I don't understand how to do it and like it takes me four times as long as like a normal mechanic or whatever or I have to research it or fuck up perseverance makes me get get through that and just keep on trying keep on hitting and that mm-hmm. kind of goes with life like life keeps fucking throwing elbows and punches at you and you just got to keep rolling the waves keep on coming you just got to keep riding it so life has a lot of ups and downs it's just how about how you react to it and uh, that perseverance that he taught me really definitely carries carries over for sure with a lot of stuff. What about you, Gregor, and how are you? <clears throat> my uh, my parents raised me um, like Christian. I had to. <laughs> I had same, <laughs> same with my dad. I had to memorize uh, Bible verses before. Going out to hang out with my friends. What? Yeah. <laughs> See, mine are not that crazy. Same. I don't want to say crazy, but. I mean, that's not that's not crazy, not crazy. but no. in a way, I guess you should allow it's your. It's not done a lot though anymore. It's just they. I think they wanted the structure mm-hmm. that you get from religion, but teaching your kids values is tough because you're not all always around. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta. You gotta. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that, Miss W. You gotta tell me to stop speaking Spanish sometimes. No, you're doing Miss good. Miss Tabian, come on, you, you just came back from Mexico. Me llamo so. Rachel. <laughs> wow. Mernina. Y'all know more than me. People are gonna be like, "What is Mernina?" I told him. I taught him last night what big pescado. I said pescado. Large, Spanish. large fish. <laughs> I'm talking about large fish. Yeah. The Gettys Pascal. I was like, no, there's no way. Burner would name his album The Big Fish. Yeah. Why not? It's catchy. I like it. No, yeah, yeah for sure. I'd, somebody actually was a uh, one of our good listeners was getting on to me today about being like a Burner fan. I was like, bro, <laughs> I, I understand like his like maybe his like attitude or his outlook or like how people judge him. Just I don't know based on character. Isn't the best, but he's a great businessman. He's got a really good product for the most part, you know. He he has a lot of businesses. He mm-hmm. has his hands on a lot of stuff. He's a good, like, businessman for sure. And he's just Bay Area hype. Like, he's a big sure. influence out here. So if you live out here, like, you're pretty much a fan. For sure. And he's, he's I, I want to say he's one of the smaller businesses. Cause he's going believe all me, in other states. Once yeah. these big businesses, like to Marlboro and shit, Cookies will, oops, excuse me. Cookies will be one of these smaller businesses that are that'll be like more connoisseur wow. type shit, which is pretty cool. I'm, and I'm glad because he's got good stuff. He's working with good people. So, but I, I see the reason why some people don't like him because he does like kind of quote whine about like let's say like the raw thing, and like I I I kind of hit back on him. I was like, dude, he's a businessman. He's trying to put down his competitor. Yeah. Maybe not in the best way per se. Well, you should never do that. Because in you don't. My opinion. Yeah, but. He's trying to get it. He's trying to get his fucking business up. So, yeah. but not a good look. And I, I just think he got fucked over by Josh or something. That's why he did that. There's something deeper about it. We gotta have him on the podcast. Well, it's always there's something deeper. Industry. Yeah. Yeah. Drama. This pre roll is great. I'm burning it down. Might want to ask that brother. Boxing. Oh man. So uh, I'm gonna go this route. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go way to the right. Uh-oh. <clears throat> left. Watch out. To the left, right, middle, Alabama. What do y'all think about abortion and the Whoa. shit that's going on there? <laughs> oh, he just went there. I know. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> grunting Gregor. <and. coughs> this weed. I mean, I can say Thank one you. thing. I don't think that a bunch of men should be making that decision necessarily. Agreed. 
And I just feel like it is America, so why shouldn't people have a choice? It doesn't matter which choice you are pro either way. You should have a choice. But, like, you should have a choice nowadays. Like, I think that's kind of ridiculous to have such a thing. But I guess you could just move out of Alabama. That's fucked up, though, to but, force right? people to, to force people to live and and then move to to relocate just because they fucked the laws over. That's Agreed. garbage. This is just with cannabis. That's dude. ridiculous. That's ridiculous. No, they've always had the choice. They should always have the choice because you might not be in uh, any kind of a situation where you can raise a child. Yeah, correct. And what about what about females that end up getting raped and then getting pregnant? Yeah, I mean that's I so that unfortunate. That's that's a post traumatic stress disorder. Insane. That's a traumatic brain injury. Maybe I mean it could be so much leading to that. It's just we should be able to make these choices. That's part of being a free country. And how could a very young like rape victim have to carry that out? Like that's crazy to me. Yeah, she no. could be so young. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's and just... you could get more of a sentence to have an abortion than the actual rapist. <clears throat> and that's ridiculous. Wow. But some of the politicians that were behind it were saying things like, "God would make it happen," like if it was supposed to be. See, blah, I don't think blah, we blah. should have religion and politics. <laughs> like, I just think like some of the statements the people that voted on it on were just crazy ridiculous statements that was the problem that i had with it kind of it's frustrating i don't think religion and politics should be a mixture the only thing i do like is on the pledge of allegiance when we say under god but the thing is that's what i'm (laughs) that's what the whole argument is though is that america was founded under those values you know yeah 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 so like we also do we want it to be where it's just yeah, I mean, everyone should be able to do what they want, but shouldn't America be okay. something, let, some vision of something? Let me see. Let me tell you this. The government run wild. The government should not tell you what you can do to your body and put in your I body. Agree. Like, if you want to go do shrooms or you want to go do fucking whatever and, like, you want to go do fucking crack cocaine, like, do that shit in your own fucking private place, whatever. And the government shouldn't the government shouldn't be regulating or fucking putting you in jail for this. Like, if people want to do this to their own body, let them fucking do it. Yeah, you know. And 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 so this is drugs kind of for sure. No, I I think the same with abortion too. Um, and I I think it's similar to when these people had to move, these families had to move from wherever, whatever state to go to Colorado to get their kids uh, medicine. For when they had insane mm-hmm. amount of seizures per day, you know, and they had to relocate. Like that's so shitty. Mm-hmm. So I, it's we're getting there, but obviously we're regressing in some states. I'm um, talking about abortion, but we're moving along with cannabis. Fuck, it's yeah. sad that that shit's still going on. It's sad that also people are still getting locked up for cannabis. Well, it's crazy too. Like being from Florida and then moving <coughs> to California, such a progressive state that other states are so much different you know california is a little too aggressive r- progressive <laughs> and the fact that like they'd be like banning plastic straws where we got fucking what 17 percent of the population in san francisco is homeless or something like that something crazy but yeah we're banning like just dumb shit like y'all need to focus on the real matters here you know sorry yeah no sorry to... that's a good point because well, believe me i, I I'm, used to I'm walk the non-plastic shit save the oceans yeah speaking of that we're gonna do a beach cleanup here soon but i used to walk in the streets of san francisco and it's bad bad with the homeless it's it's and san jose it's pretty bad oh san francisco it's, really it's bad. worse in oakland and san francisco for sure like do you think we should have to pay three thousand dollars for a studio apartment and then you go downstairs and you're walking through piss from Literally. the homeless or and watching someone else in an That's argument over drugs and sketchy shit and people screaming and banging their heads against street signs and like what the f- <laughs> like what i we w- see that go we to see work that walking in san jose yeah that's san jose too that's everywhere it's ridiculous it's crazy it's not everywhere <clears throat> it's not everywhere where is it right, not? where not, is it not not in florida either. not why? florida and why the, and the places that fucking have systems put in place and that have like it's I don't know everything about, about that topic, believe me, me but they need to put more energy. Let's just put it that way. They need to put more energy into that. 
I, I don't think know. they do. I think they're just known for being really nice and SF, correct and, so ac- and accepting and all that people shit. People just kind of mooch off of it because no, it's a problem because of all the people that. Okay, you can be homeless. I could be ignorant saying all of this, so I'm like sure. not trying to offend anybody, but I'm just uh, people are gonna my be point inf- of view. Uh, people are gonna be offended. Everybody's offended nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking god. They also have crazy protests down there. I was not used to that. Yeah, uh-huh. those those protests get pretty violent too. People get hurt. A friend of mine, uh, he got involved in. <clears throat> Sorry, Austin. He got involved in uh, trying to help a woman that was in a car broken down, and there was a protest. It was a uh, one of these race protests, and it got violent. And uh, one of my friends ended up getting pulled out of his car, his jaw broken. What? Yeah. What the fuck? In Fresno, so that's where this has happened. Dang. Just for ge- just for being there, it's uh, pretty sad. And Berkeley, like they have fucking some. Cr- they have the everybody out there. Like not only the Berkeley police, but they have some ha- national guard sometimes, dude. In Berkeley, because you know how, I think like s- there was some right wing person came to speak at the school and. He couldn't even speak or some shit. I forget. What? Someone, someone's gonna correct me on this. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm over happened? here what just happened? geeked out and high, like laughing at all the smoothie, just like all over your teeth Fuck. and mouth and everything. <laughs> Dude, you know what's bad? <laughs> As I haven't changed since I was a little kid. <laughs> Austin, you're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I pride myself on trying to be a kid a lot. It's a good thing, but. Not like this. <laughs> Youthfulness. Yeah. It's all that antioxidants. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to call it. Dude. Um, I remember I used to hide Oreos. Like, I used to, I don't know. I don't know why. That just <laughs> really came. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I'm like four years old, and this is the shitty thing. Four man. years old. Oh, wow. No. That's a good memory. Schemer. That's a good memory. Maybe like six. What happened? I've been eating Oreos since a <laughs> young and um, <clears throat> I would hide them and like a couple of times accidentally my grandma so this is at my grandma's house right <laughs> I would like they would open the pantry because I couldn't open it and I would grab like a handful whenever they weren't looking <laughs> and then you can't be like a, a little young buck walking around with a handful of Oreos so no, I hid them I would hide them in like the couch cushions and, like, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> under I swear <laughs> <laughs> so under funny. like the under like the table like the coffee table and like there's a couple times where the dog ate a couple <laughs> and they like it was bad oh man he didn't have to like get his stomach pumped or anything but i'm an idiot that was you going bad. primal and trying to get your macros in right. from an early age <laughs> <laughs> Spending them <laughs> calories <laughs> Chasing after girls <laughs> The reason they say Damn that it. chocolate is bad for dogs Is because it has caffeine in it Really? No, I think it's I think it's the chocolate That's what it's, they say. I, think they're, I don't think so about that I think it's the chocolate I'm sure there's dumb people that feed their dog coffee No, their body can't process the, the chocolate I don't think that they have the enzymes needed like we do huh. I, I think that's what it is their processing system is different for food, and they can't process chocolate well, <laughs> or it, like it fucks them up. The garage is box is all I know. Dude. Tell tell Siri to search it. <laughs> I'm lit, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just to review, Gregor and <laughs> we water two times for every time we feed. So, how does that look on a calendar? So we're talking about growing. So water every three to four days or so, whenever the soil gets too dry, right? Soil gets dry. Here's a good rule of thumb: stick your pointer finger, literally. <laughs> good rule of thumb: stick your pointer finger deep in the soil. Mm. If your first knuckle, that like everybody's pointer finger is like an inch, inch and a half long, if your first knuckle it's all the way dry up to there, it's time to water our feet. If it's not, if you're a little bit of your pointer finger gets wet, you can wait a little bit. It's okay. Well, that's a good rule of thumb. So, because you want the roots to reach out and, and forcibly grow, correct? Mm-hmm. So Ray brought up a great point here. Tell it again. Why, 
Why don't you want to water every day, every well, other day? Well, that was day? just me thinking about it, like... Why don't you want to? Like, if you keep the soil moisture so high and it's very, like, watery, the roots aren't going to have to go searching for it, so they're not growing. And you can exactly kind of force them to get bigger and reach out versus kind of, like, spoiling them and keeping them watered. And you don't want to overwater them either. Right, correct. Because that could kill them, right? Yeah, and they can they can form certain uh, diseases because of that root rot and shit like that. So what? Yeah, if you water them too much, for sure. And so you just want to make sure the soil is like, however, I guess you want it. If it's dry, you obviously need to water it, but you can exactly just feel it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I say it's it's kind of hard to say. Hey, every two, every three, every four. It depends on much sun you get. It depends how hot it is outside. It depends how much you watered. Because some days time. you might have to water like twice that day if it's really hot or something, and they're in small pots and. Yeah, if they're in really small, I mean, I wouldn't say twice a day, uh, but if, nah, <laughs> they wouldn't need unless they're in really small pots. But what about plant. those days How when it was like a hundred degrees, or a hundred and three? So they just put them in the shade. So yeah, recently in uh, Northern California, we had we've had some really hot days. We've had highs of like one hundred four, one hundred five. This ain't not personally. This ain't shit compared to Florida. Oh it's humid. man, watch out! It's humid as hell there <laughs> yeah. in Florida. It is. I just I just visited for the first time. Just to say that, but yeah. For- <laughs> <laughs> so the the temperature here was like one hundred six. It was one hundred one the next day, and it was like ninety eight the next day. Hot. I watered them. I think the beginning morning of the one hundred one day or the one hundred six. Excuse me, the mm-hmm. first day. They were fine for all three days. It was crazy. It was their first like few days actually being out in the full sun, and they really did just fine. So it was pretty cool watching that. I was keeping an eye out on them for sure, a keen eye. <laughs> you know the emoji with like he's like one eye closed, one eye open, looking up at you with like mm-hmm. a little inspector mm-hmm. thing spectacle. around one, spectacle around his right eye. <laughs> yeah, love that one. Wait, um, isn't that a monocle? Is that what that yeah, is? Yeah, it's Maybe a monocle. <laughs> Gregor has an Android, so he doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I don't, uh, but I got it right. <laughs> true. Hey, what are y'all, team iPhone or team Android? Or actually, we have some listeners in some crazy countries, so whatever y'all have. Uh, I team think blank. Other countries have iPhone. That's true. And they have and some Android weird chi- Chinese Austin. phone. Austin. <laughs> whatever <laughs> other country you guys <laughs> have <laughs> phones, Dude. like it's the same. No, no. Whatever you, you aliens have. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you. All right, we're going to have some people hit us up about it for sure. Let me know what different phones y'all got, please. <laughs> they can always tweet us too. I've been tweeting every day. Ray has been tweeting. <laughs> I'm getting better at it, but hell yeah, because tweeting, I guess, is just more like in the moment. It's, it's short. Like, I like know? it. Yeah, you should. You can tweet right like now. Like I could just tweet smoking a bowl. Like that could Fuck be. Fuck yeah! Tweet. Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> why not? It's whatever. It's show your show yourself. Show your. Little, and I uh, love how you brought a plant in here as we're talking about growing. So yeah, what are you looking at right now, right? Pineapple upside down cake, but it was one of the very early ones that we got and we're trying to test how and early? early grow how early we could start. How early? Um we're, I would say close to 420. April 20th, really that late? Or that early, you think? That you got that one? No, I would say early May. I don't know. I got some pretty early. Oh, you kept this one under the light. Mm, yeah. No, but no, that was the guava jelly. That's right. Oh, man. I know. R.I.P. Which was a CBD strain and I wanted to grow it. I think Airfield might have it, but uh, I would. so many. I would grow the guava jelly over a few of mine. I'll take it. I think Airfield might have it. Okay. If I see a good one, I'm going to get it. Hot body. A to the hot boy. Because uh-huh. we like growing the CBD strains. You said the other day you wanted to be smoking CBD flour. Yes, and at ma'am. Work, and at work, we got one the other day. It was pretty good. Oh, y'all got a CBD strain? Nice. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, Inside, but yeah. I don't know what the strain was, but it was CBD flour Do that you know we the... pulled down. <clears throat> and they had put it into pre-rolls. You, oh, so, but y'all grew it. Mm-hmm. What ratio? Do you know? Um, I'm not sure, actually. I'd like to know. Let me know I where I can like buy it. I would like to know, it. too. For sure. When I you, would like to know, too. When no, you get in the I stock. I think we're getting more. 
Because yeah. they pull down, like, they harvest and pull down flour every week. That's freaking cool. It's cool. Like, the calendars, they have, like, big dry erase boards, and they're writing down, like, the different strains, what week they're in, and, like, all that stuff. It's really cool. That's sick. And they're, like, they're, they do their own genetics now, too, so they do all kinds of crossing, and they have different seeds, and... How do you like uh, how do you like working in the cannabis industry? Ooh, I love it. It's seriously <laughs> a dream. It's so fun every single day. I'm like super passionate about it, so I like the environment and the people that I'm around and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun, and it's cool working for a cultivator and flower because it really is like the essence of the cannabis industry. She doesn't have to hide her passion. Yeah, exactly. That's cool, too, because, like, cool. obviously all my coworkers smoke, and we all talk about it. We like this strain. We like that. Oh, and when we're smoking our own flower, we even get to report back to each other, oh, this one made me feel this way or that. Wow, that's your job. So, that's fucking yeah, it's like, awesome. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, think, I think that's awesome. And oh, as yeah. I'm, like, building relationships with my clients and stuff, too, obviously, like, I'm going to be smoking with them and bonding. And what do you What do you do for the listeners that are just now listening in? I am an account executive for a cultivator in Oakland. We also have our distribution license, so we do all of our packaging of our flour and stuff in-house. But basically, we're an indoor grow facility in Oakland. And yeah, there's like 40 people in the company. What's the name? West Coast Sunrise. Oh, snap. West Coast is the best coast. They do. Definitely. You can look them up on Instagram. <clears throat> Definitely. West Coast Sunrise. I've blessed that raid. Let's me try some sometimes. I'm very lucky. It's was good. It, wasn't that a, what was that? Purple, what was that last? Purple, Purple, Purple Peaks. Peaks. Purple Peaks. Mm-hmm. Wow. What is it, right? It's Mac and Mendo Breath. And Mac <laughs> is a very popular strain from a geneticist <laughs> called the Capulator. And fun fact, one of the strains Austin's growing in our garden is a collab with Purple City Genetics and the Capulator. Which one is that? Um, Capstone. Yep, Capstone. Which is apricot. Which is orange apricot. And cherry pie crossed with. good though it's really cool too because part of my job is memorizing strains like how cool is that uh, okay what it's about, like making what flash about cards i'm like pie. i feel like i'm in school but it's weed you, cherry pie orange apricot and what is it i don't remember <laughs> I don't either. you should no, know it's yours I should know. I, I wrote it, I and then you have down. the purple city genetics cookies i wrote it down though what is it ray I'm, I'm so mad I'm kicking myself that I did not pick up the mochi, but it would have been I'm still pissed. a little early. Yeah. What about Ooh. what about Midnight Splendor? What is that? Ooh. Kawaii Purple, Cali Mist, Girl Scout Cookies, and GDP. So tell people you oh. have it in the garden. Don't what? it's this isn't just a random strain that oh, Gregor yeah, yeah. just spit out, by the way. <laughs> Midnight Splendor is one of the strains that actually both Ray and I are growing. Midnight Splendor. Mm -hmm. It's a hybrid, but yeah, it's got a bunch of good crosses. It looks when it finishes like purple and kind of a little pink, right? Yeah, Sorry. and they said it's like Hawaiian bread. <laughs> That's why it has like the kawaii purple. So the capstone, I'm looking at it now because I've been mm -hmm. in my notes totally off from what I was thinking. So, okay, <laughs> the first parent is cherry pie crossed with orange apricot, like yeah, Ray was saying. That. Yep, and the other one was super lemon dog. Mm. Totally forgot. That one's going to be fire. Okay, so let me tell tell the peeps what's <laughs> going on. So what what I got in the garden. Ray, you want to tell yours? You go first. All right. Send it. Here we go. Capstone. So this is my only sativa. It's super lemon dog crossed with cherry pie and orange apricot. Venom OG. It's a hybrid. It's crossed with Venom OG and Humboldt OG. What do you know? Midnight <laughs> Splendor. Ray just said it. It's Cali Mist Kawaii Pink. Purple. Kawaii Purple. Kauai. I want to go there. My best friend, Joe, shout out, Joe, uh, is going to move there soon, too. Um, what else? What else? Sorry. Cali see. Mist. Cali Mist. Yeah. GDP. Girl Scout Cookies. There we go. Yes. Damn. She kills it. 
And then I have cookies, Purple City Genetics cookies, which is GDP, OG, Kush, and Durban Poison. Yep. That is, th- those three are just amazing home runs. Isn't it crazy though? Read them again. GDP, Indica. OGK, Hybrid. More Indica. Leaning, yes. Durban Poison, Sativa. Sativa. That's a sick ass cross. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Wait, wait. What is it? That's in all Durban you have? Poison? No. By the way, cookies for all the veterans out there is a very good <laughs> anxiety killing, PTSD killing strain. Um, Santa Cruz Veterans Alliance, shout out those guys, have a combat cookies. Yeah, I <clears> love it. That they have crossed uh, with their own genetics that is extremely PTSD reducing strain, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Shout out them. They actually give free cannabis out to uh, veterans in need. And they pay the taxes on that shit. Yeah. Ain't that wild? Ain't that some shit? It's crazy. That's awesome. Doing good things. Hell yeah. yeah. Vets helping vets. <laughs> Shout out them. Diamond OG. It's unknown. Cross with OGK. Okay. Okay. Eh. But it looks good right now. What is it? It's Diamond OG. Okay. Is unknown. Cross with OGK. Okay. So it's an OG cut. Yep. Paris OG. You I know, got the man. three OGs. I know. Venom, Diamond, and Paris. Yes. Sounds like a gang of strippers. Yes. <laughs> Name my ladies. ladies. Y'all better look sexy ladies. in the garden. You know oh, what I'm saying? Man. I'm sure they Which we're, we're not keeping all of these, nope. just to clarify. We're going to narrow down which ones are turning out better because it's, what, bit. week two or three right now? Correct. So, yeah, they're going to uh, um, quite a bit. Will be but cut. these are all of the ones we have right now. Yes, man. Two times. What's Paris? What's my girl Paris, though? Headband and Lemon OGK. Oh, okay. That one sounds pretty good. We'll see. She looks all right. All skinny. Right. She's a skinny girl. So you got the OGs. What do you got? What else? Skittles. Ooh. Skittles. What's Skittles again? <laughs> Which I, don't, I don't know. I've never really What is had... Skittles? When I've tried Skittles the flower, I've only had one time where it was spectacular. All the other times were, eh. I think it's because it's one of the overdone strains. So I'm about to do it, and we're about to really see. So. <laughs> oh, okay. We're about, we're what about is to put Skittles, it to the though? test, brethren. What is Skittles, though? The cross, do you remember? Yes, I do, because I have it written down, but oh, I didn't okay. remember. Oh. It is grape ape. Oh. Grapefruit. Unknown. Oh, okay. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. It's indica, right? You remember that YouTube video that was like, remember that rap video that dumb? <laughs> oh crap! What? I forget. <laughs> How many is that so far? What else do you have? That's it. Killer. That's it. That's it. Your turn. Yay! So hey. my only sativa really is pineapple upside down cake, which is looking fine right now. It's pineapple train wreck and cookie monster. Gregor has that one too. Yes, sir. <laughs> yep. And then I got the same as Austin Midnight Splendor. And then Banana Punch, which should do really well. It's Banana OG and Purple Punch. And GMO Cookies, which is Chem Dog and Girl Scout Cookies. And then my friend has a um, Blue Dream here. So that one looks really good, which you also have, Gregor. Blue yes. Dream. What else do you have? I got uh, Gorilla Glue 4 Ooh. and then the Midnight Splendor. And then... What was the, <laughs> what was you the one that's dream. native? You, what that's native? Blue uh, dream. Is that blue dream? Blue dream. So you said it was gonna be bigger. Talk about blue dream, man. What do you know about you. that? You. What do you know about All that? All right, blue dream. <laughs> it was bred to like it is. grow here. It was bred in Santa Cruz, the Santa Cruz Mountains. It is a sativa, sativa hybrid. Some people, for some odd reason, claim that it's an indica indica hybrid. I'm not too sure. I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. Most of the time I've had it, I definitely feel it's the effects. Here we go. It's bred here. It's the heaviest yielding. yielding plant strain there is. They're known pretty much. It's it wild. It is known. Yeah. It's it, known to grow crazy wild, big, very plentiful, very healthy. In the early 2000s, like everything on the East Coast was all Blue Dream. And it's like, still a great stream. Even Juicy J, like, ta- like he had a whole album about Blue Dream, Blue Dream and Lean. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's that's honestly, there's a couple of good songs. Um, <laughs> but it, just like Sour Diesel was probably like four years ago, right? It like flooded the East Coast. Mm-hmm. That's all everybody was smoking for a year or two. 
Same shit with the blue dream. But it's now it seems like it's cookies. Yeah, I agree. But it is an extremely high yielding strain. Tall growing plant. Very it, it just is a monster. I mean you, <laughs> it already you can already tell. Yeah, it's you taken keep, off. Yeah, it's the first four or five days of it like actually being in its own home in its own little one gallon pot and it's already ferociously growing like it three has like three new leaves stacks of leaves yeah yeah how, how do you how would you describe that it's got like three sets of nodes coming sets out of, yeah okay. so at the fourth one you chop down the tops it depends top stock? it depends how what the spacing is on it the spacing some people looks don't like. really top some people don't top their plants at all but for the blue dream you definitely want to do stress management you definitely want to do things such as low stress training which is the pirate ship moved again so what i was just doing to our, our little indoor plant is basically you pull down the arms or the branches of the plant right gently because we have smart pots which are little breathable fabric pots and what this allows us to do is not only does it allow the pot to breathe but you can kind of knife little slices of holes on the side of the pot and you can put like twine or like garden tie around these branches and you pull them down real gently. You mm-hmm. you can't be forceful with it. And you got to... Because it'll snap. You got to be gentle. Now also do this after it's been watered maybe a half a day or a day. Because if you don't want it to dry, it's, it's going to snap. It, there's not an, enough pliability in the... In the stem. In the stem because there's not enough water. Um, so do it like after it's been watered. But you pull down literally like... Pull the leaves out, make them so they grow wider, and you're essentially kind of holding them down. You're holding them down, and you're forcing them to grow outwards, basically you're toward... You're directing them. Yep, towards sideways, laterally, and... Uh, Versus straight up. What that allows you to do is the sun is allowing it to hit so much more places on the plant. Not only is it forcing the main branches to go outwards, the plant that is now exposed to the sun or the top of the, the branch that's looking at the sun is going to grow up really high versus if if those branches were upwards and those little branches that are growing from those aren't going to see sun only a little bit of them are on the side if you're forcing these to grow outwards laterally all of the the branch is now exposed to the sun Mm -hmm. versus just a little bit so i'm raising my my arms up in the sky and i'm showing them the inside of my arm will not get tan if i hold them upwards but as soon as I bring them down, mm-hmm. the, my arms down to my side, look at my bicep and forearm is now exposed to the sun. So now that's forcing the plant from those areas to grow upwards because it's getting so that's much more juice. That's a good analogy. So, thank Reaching you. I, up and getting a tan versus having your arms out. Yeah. I'm trying to make it more visual because mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to understand, right? So that's called low stress training, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I think then t- it might be high stress training, but either way, you are stress training the plant. Yes, <laughs> but for be sure. easy on it. Another good uh, method is. And you're not we- doing this until when? Sorry. Uh, it's okay. Uh, you're doing it after a couple weeks. And like I said to Gregor, it's like the next method, what I would recommend would be topping. You want to wait a couple weeks, and it's kind of based on the size of them and how they're stacking because the, the nodes could be shorter, mm-hmm. and there could be three nodes that have stacked. You want to let that grow out four or five. You want to let it grow out so it's like a foot tall. Yeah. But if it's like, if it's that skinny ass Paris OG that's really skinny, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it, basically grow its three nodes because it's so skinny, it's spacing out those nodes so far that I'm gonna just chop it out the third. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna let it go four or five. It's gonna be too late then. Mm-hmm. Um, Why is it gonna be too late? So topping is basically when you have. Uh, the plant probably about a foot tall. You want to make sure the roots are well established. There, it's just it's a decently it's a strong plant. You don't want to be fucking with an unhealthy plant. They're just gonna fuck up even more. Um, topping basically you when you cut off literally the newest growth of the cannabis mm-hmm. plant, the very top of the plant. Instead of having that one main growth that's going upwards to the sky, now you're forcing it to grow two main growths because now the very the very first thing okay. This is a bad analogy, but you get your head chopped off and you still have your arms pointing out to the side. Now your arms are going to grow forcefully Mm -hmm. outwards because there's no more. Your head's not going to grow anymore. Yeah, there's no more blood. There's no more energy, water, nutrients going to your head. So Mm -hmm. now your body can 
It's a bad analogy. Yeah. I'm sorry you're no, thinking that. that. Works. I, want, I want my head to stay on. <laughs> yeah. Please. Well, if it's kind of just like humans, the more you kind of give them a little low or middle stress, the more they're going to grow from that. You got to allow them though. You can't be fucking with them right after they're, they've, they've been topped or they've been low stress trained. They need time to adjust. Yeah. Don't be, don't be doing even more Crazy stuff to here. it. Yeah. What do you, what do you mean fucking with them? So for instance, don't Think be about tr- if you just get surgery, like you're not going to be trying to do, get surgery on every single thing. Like you need to have one thing done, take it slow. Don't overdo it. Be easy on them. Yeah. I mean, they like, they like being pushed around and trained and topped and all this stuff, but let them recover. And then, like I said, if you want to do another topping, like for instance, that blue dream, it's going to grow crazy. You're going to want to top that thing every three weeks. Now, other plants, especially like indica type growing plants, you're going to want to wait. And it might only be topped once, maybe twice. But that that blue dream is going to be topped probably four or five times. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I love talking growing, man. That's my favorite. That's my favorite part of cannabis. I'm excited. I mean, obviously the medicinal effects, well, especially for veterans, but growing. I love that shit. It's cool to understand the plant and have that relationship with it because then you appreciate yeah, all of it. True. But you know, it's the crazy thing is I don't even know a ton. Like I know a, a decent amount to get me by, but like, I don't know down the science. I haven't been growing this shit for freaking years and years. I know, people will be growing it for 20 years. So I I have so much to learn, and like the people that think they have it all figured out, that's that's not the best attitude to have because this plant is very, very intense, I guess you could say. Very uh, touchy, particular. It's got a lot. It's got a lot of parts. so many variables, yeah. The cannabinoids, I mean, we've already found 400 different parts of the plant. It's, uh, and it keeps growing, so... This plant is wild. What if it only had 420? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> God, it would definitely be a smoker for sure. Because 420 was started by like a group of high school kids in San Rafael, like north of San Francisco, and they would all meet after school at 420 to blaze. So that's like where that came from. That's so That'd be damn. crazy if that's what it like ended up being. I didn't know that. Thank you. And the, the classic <clears throat> event now happens on Hippie Hill in San Francisco. And it's like freaking, it's wild. There's a big old, and Golden Gate Park, there's like a big old hill. And there's usually the stage, right? Concert stage, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, at thousands, thousands of people, hundreds, thousands? Thousands. Thousands, thousands. for thousands. sure. I would say like maybe 10,000. Yeah, 10,000. A at ton least. of people. At definitely, yeah. It's what? like Guinness World Record smoke sash. For, for sure. sure. And here's the Clouds. crazy. There's literally like a, a mild cloud above it's everyone. It's so freaking cool. It's so sick, dude. It is literally the biggest smoke sash. Everybody has the biggest doinkers. joints, stabs, doinkers, whatever. They bring the craziest stuff. I saw someone with a bong that had a attachment on it that was a magnifying glass aimed at the bowl. So you would just hit your bong in the sun and you would use the sun to light your bowl. That's so sick. Yeah, I have a picture of it. Let me tell you something. There's no fights there. I wonder why. It's weird, right? I wonder. It's kind of like communal. (laughs) Yeah, because it brings people together. I'm telling you, man. Any walk, any experience you've had, any color, whatever, it brings people together. I love this plant. It's crazy. Think if there was that uh, the equivalent in smoke, right? That's in the air versus like a giant drinking party. Think of how, the difference in the attitudes of people. <laughs> One million percent, dude. I would like jump off like a two story house into a pool, <laughs> drunk. You think I'd do that high? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you might. I might. I think dude. you might. If it was a cliff, I'd do it. Yeah. What? The end of the, end of the there ocean. you go. Cliff jumping, baby. Let's go. End of the ocean. Now. Now, mind you, I do say I, I love this plant, right? I'm just saying more so fighting versus like peacemaking. Aggressive, yeah, with alcohol, of course. <clears throat> let me let me transition into something else. So, just I love this plant, right? But life is all about balance. You can drink too much water and die. Obviously, you can't smoke yourself out and die. But what I'm saying is life is all about balance. And the stigma of being a lazy stoner and being stuck in the couch is almost dead but you can be you can 
do too much and, and let it consume you. Mm-hmm. And it's not well, necessarily the plant doing it. It's you doing it to yourself. And you can do that with anything. I agree. So um, hopefully we're, we're definitely killing but that more, stigma. But yeah, more people just need to Life is about balance, that. you know? So you got to still get your shit done, right? You got to get your priorities done. So, and not everybody can, can do this like us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and some people do it more than us and that's okay. We're, so, we're a different breed of, of human beings. How? Marine Corps veterans. And not, that's not what your about typical. Ray? That's not your typical. I know. We're di- we're he a said lot I could handle some of that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's mental. I mean, of course it's physical, but beyond the physicality, it's all. 90% mental. Yeah. Not Marine Corps, obviously. Like, just like that kind of discipline in general, right. I could probably handle. I think you could do any other branch with ease. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Honestly, I'm just going to support it. Love y'all. Appreciate I love you it. too. You're a sweetheart. I do too. Love you, right? Like you got, you need people like us too. Oh you know yeah. Saying? Oh yeah, for sure. No, of course. Can we speak upon that? I feel. Well, I like that the beach cleanup and there's been other like veteran smoke sessions and stuff like that. Like they say you can bring obviously other people, you know? Yeah. Cause like, I like to feel a part of it. But obviously I can't relate, you know? Speak about Weed for Warriors. What is this? <clears throat> Weed for Warriors. Um, a good friend of mine, Brian Schweizer, he's the president of the Oakland chapter. That's the one that I have been helping out with for like a year and a half or so. What What's is it? it? Called? So they, Weed for Warriors. Weed for Warriors. Yeah, Weed for okay. Warriors project. And then, um, so they have multiple locations. They reach out to vets. They hold uh, sessions where. Um, um, smoke sessions where they provide you with meds, free meds, if you have a recommendation and um, you have proof of service. You know, it's where all these veterans get together. They get to talk to each other. They get to smoke together. They get That's to cool. share their stories. Yeah, a lot of these guys, all the way back to Vietnam vets um, from all of these different wars, different time periods coming together from different units. I actually met one of my seniors from uh the first push in fallujah um three one kilo third platoon first squad like my legit senior just 10 years before me through uh weed for warriors oakland yeah that's cool yeah it's fucking crazy (laughs) and it's crazy that it's like weed brings you together you know yeah i never would have imagined that while i was in or even before i was ever in same it's crazy 100 percent Never would have thought this. If you told me, if you told me I would have, I would have had a cannabis podcast. If you told me I'd be smoking weed after the military, I'd say you're high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> me too. And I, I would have walked like away. That. I would have walked away. But then I would have been like, hmm, maybe I will. Dude, this is open mind. I had a uh, open mind always. Hopefully, I had a decent post today. I felt like it was good. It just came from the heart. I don't know. I felt like posting it, but it's helped me open my mind a lot, and not like a crazy way, like trippy, extreme shit like that. It's helping me open my mind and the fact that it's closed a lot of barriers for, or excuse me, dropped down a lot of barriers for me. And it's like no other medicine I know that can do that. in like a mild way, instead mm-hmm. of having to fucking go through like a crazy trip, something that can That's do that true. in a mild way that you can do that just so openly and educated and you in know? a safe way too, in a safe way. And I'm so for that with veterans and anybody, I mean, especially, I mean, Normal people definitely can help, but people that have been through a lot of shit. People with anxiety too, you know, post-traumatic stress, anything. Well, it was pretty crazy when I was in a dispensary. I heard a couple talking and they were like just getting some edibles and like some pre-rolls. And they're like, yeah, I used to drink a lot. But now, like, honestly, I'd rather just use cannabis because I, you know, it's just a more fun, chill way to unwind and relax. Yes. And a lot more people have opened up to it. So, I mean, you're right. Obviously, it has great use for veterans, but like these people were totally normal just coming in and buying. I was like, this is so cool. That's so awesome. I love seeing that. It's I I think it's so much more healthy and especially like it is healthier, uh, manageable. And uh, I mean, if you're smoking like raw papers or you're smoking out of glass with a hemp wick. That's probably the best way to smoke Mm -hmm. and the cleanest way. And you're definitely not going to be inhaling anything that's like 
processed if you're smoking just some tree, you know? Do I think that's the best way for everybody? No. No, it might not be. But I do. That's probably my favorite. Well, that's the one. I don't want to say cannabis has anything negative about it, but Damn, people sound, do have to kind of like learn what's good for them. I sounded like a dick. My bad. You're good. My bad. No, <laughs> that's that's true. But no, I'm, I'm just saying uh, I, I do. I do believe in that for me, for myself. I, I think flour is the best way to go, for, but not for everybody, for sure. Um, yeah, I could speak more deeply into that about like different forms and shit, but you understand so and i think our audience does as well i'm not gonna sorry my bad wow y'all are looking, y'all are looking at me all crazy I'm just we're high. about to smoke some purple cheetah piss what the hell kind of names they be doing do you remember what that strain was negatory but burner does say cheetah piss in one of his songs he said cheetah piss got me lazy or something we're gonna have him on the podcast and also, yep, I'm going there. We're also going to have Josh Kesselman on the podcast, too. Um, the owner of Raw Papers. So That's lit. Yeah. For sure. I don't know what it is. So, <laughs> cheetah piss is lemonade, <laughs> cookies, and London pound cake. Oh, my God. What? Lemonade, cookies, and London pound cake. Jesus Christ. That's cheetah piss? Isn't yeah. that a Drake song? Lemon pound oh, cake. You hear that? <laughs> I can't get away with one little thing. Yes, I hear it. Did you uh, see me moving it away? <laughs> hey, you're so. My phone has interference. You're it's so, the aliens. It has EMF. You don't think so? People be having. Okay. Can I can I tell people a little life tell hack? Them. Oh, Talk to them. Life hack. This isn't me speaking oh. with a little aluminum hat on. Like I'm not like a little crazy fucking <laughs> '70s hippie. But check me out. Your phone emits electric, uh, like, it's a fucking electronic device that's always on your body and you're always touching it. When you sign up for a fucking iPhone, in the terms and conditions, it says you're not supposed to hold the phone. You're not supposed to have direct contact. Did you know that most of the- Because they're going to get sued later when we start finding out that it gives you cancer and everything else. For sure. So some of the, like, bigger upper employees for Apple, their kids don't have fucking iPhones. I tell people, here's a little life hack. I tell people to turn off their Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on their phones when they're not using it. Because that shit is just more energy. It's radiating. Especially if you have that shit in your pocket all day. That's not good. Or in your hands. All that shit. Sorry to no, go off yeah. on my rocker. But it just helps. I'm just trying to help. Like Maybe maybe that'll help. And you know what? I'm, I'm willing to take that extra five seconds and do that. And hopefully it's helping. I feel like it is. Well... I also, Sorry, my bad. No, I mean, because I, I already know you're crazy about all that kind of stuff. But even with, like, the little lights and stuff, like, that come off of your Wi-Fi or your clock or shit like that, you should probably cover up. Because you're right. And it's funny it applies to cannabis because how we've been saying our outdoor lights from our neighbors, like, the floodlights will just come on. And that's not good for them in the middle of the night. Like, it wakes them up. Of course, at my work, I can't even look in the flowering room at all if the lights are off. Like, any of the light that comes in, it's going to... Disrupt them. They're going right, waking right up, you yeah, know? not good. And, like, they're going to survive, but it's just like us. Like, do we want to be getting our REM sleep, or are we going to be, like, woken up in the middle of the night, like, scared from something? REM sleep, please. Right. No, I agree. And to, just like a cannabis plant, our bodies have light receptors, pretty much, in our skin. So, light at night, in your bedroom, or what have you. Even if, if it's the TV on, even if it's an alarm clock, all that stuff. Our skin kind of naturally senses that, which is crazy. Candlelight, not so much. Um, and it sends a signal to your body that it's it's uh, it's time to wake up. It's it's sunny out. It's there's it's not nighttime. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not you're not your body's not producing melatonin, the sleep hormone. So having all your lights out or trying to diminish what lights you do have even down i'm not even kidding i have even down to like i don't even have a tv in my room but even down to like electronics gregor just hit the ball hell yeah <clears throat> even electronics that have like a little red light that signifies the the powers off on the device i have like taped mm-hmm. that's what i'm saying and i have blackout curtains that w- that's the biggest best bang for your buck if anyone if you're a cheap ass like me blackout curtains for sure 
Because even if you sleep and you wake up at, let's say, 7 a.m. and the sunrise at 6.30, those 30 minutes of, like, if you're in deep REM sleep are very crucial. Another, sorry to be fucking off my rocker again, another little life hack. You're good. This is helpful. Hell yeah. Thank you. Of course, you sound a little crazy just because you're, like, passionate about it, but hey, that's good. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's coming from my heart, though. I really like helping other people out because it's helped me. Um, Not everything I do works for other people. I understand that. Another thing I do. Uh, there's an alarm clock app. <laughs> it's <You're> funny. <laughs> it's an orange logo with like a white alarm clock, mm-hmm. and basically, it. I sleep with my uh, my phone on airplane mode every night because the people that I care about are close by me, like in terms of proximity. But my family's all the way in fucking three thousand miles away. I can't help them mm-hmm. in an instant. So I sleep with my phone off. Mm-hmm. I don't want any fucking phone. Disturbance. Disturbance. I don't want fucking Wi-Fi next to me, any of that shit. The alarm app, I can put my phone in airplane mode and it listens to my breathing. It listens through the mic on your phone. Even if it's four feet away on your bed stand, it listens to your breathing and it listens to when you're in, in REM sleep, in deep REM sleep, and it shows you a graph every night. It gives you a, a percentage on your sleep quality. And I, I like this because the alarm clock will wake you up and, and you can give it like a time but it's preferred recommended 30 minute window a 30 minute range to wake you up let's say you want to wake up at 7 it's going to wake you up between 6 45 and 7 15 for that 30 minute window you can set it shorter or longer but it's going to wake you up in the lightest sleep pattern that you're in the lightest amount of REM sleep or whatever how does it wake you up in. It uh lightly too which is nice how? it's not like me, 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 just immediately ah, out of nowhere you know what <laughs> That's not good. That's the first stressor of your morning is a loud ass alarm clock that's but reminding how else you. Do people get up? This this is one of the and good things. I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it slowly wakes you up and it like it's the volume slowly yeah. increases, but it's over time. I it's see a you know. it's a pleasant sound. Yeah, it helps. It you helps. can okay. you can hit the nightstand and by doing that it tech, it snoozes for seven minutes. Which is, you shouldn't, it's a bad practice to snooze, by the way. But, but this, we all do it. Oh, for sure. Bad. Believe me, I do it sometimes too. I'm not, I'm not perfect. But uh, I like it because it wakes you up at the lightest part of your sleep and you feel so much more refreshed. You mm-hmm. feel ready to wake up. You're not alarmed. Sometimes, sometimes I, I low key get scared waking up. And that's when you're in your deep <laughs> sleep. That's when you're in deep sleep. Yeah, for sure. That's what that means. And I'm like, ah. Yeah, so if you had that extra like that, extra 15 minutes to come out of that and then to nicely wake up, that's one of my life hacks. Austin's life hack. Yeah, it feels better. I definitely, I used to wake up with uh, some piano, like uh, alarm nice. clock. And so it would only, it would be on the second lowest volume level. So whenever I, I would have it on you constant alarm, certain, at a certain, yeah, like, We'll say like 6.30, but I wanted to get at least eight hours of sleep. So I would try to, I would get into this cycle to where I didn't even really need it. And then the alarm would go off as soon as I opened my eyes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh. Like so I, we, how, would, we would tie it for. How weird is it when you don't set an alarm and you just wake up on time? Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's better than having an alarm, mm-hmm. I think. I wish we could all just do that. I mean, my buddy Joe. How do you just wake up on time? And now he just, he he does it. What? He basically goes to sleep probably like 10. Uh, he 10. wakes up when? And he wakes up at like 6. because Every it, morning. He's a big ass, big ass window looking out to another island. Sick. And fucking, <laughs> so he just wakes up from the sun? The sun coming up. Depending on what time the sun comes up? Holy. Yeah. Fuck. Well, the sun comes up relatively the same time all year there. Yeah, you can grow like always. You summer. can grow 365, outdoor all year. You can grow outdoor all year there. That's weird. There is one season that's a little bit better, but you can grow outdoor all year. <laughs> it rains so much, doesn't it? There's certain parts. There's a lot of the Isn't island, there a lot especially of rain? in Maui, is it's microclimate. Lahaina gets like rain nine days of the year. Five miles, three miles up the road, it'll rain almost every day. What? I swear. And it's that's so weird. crazy. That's, that's kinda, so crazy. Sick. Yeah. 
Because it's just a small set of islands, like, in the middle of nowhere, basically. And it's just, like, well, they all have different climates. It's yeah, trippy well, as fuck. Based on the terrain, you got to think that the mountain yeah, and, like, course. how it's structured stops certain, certain, precipita- and, yeah. certain precipitation. And, like, there's sometimes where, like... Because the bay is a microclimate. Yeah. Molokai, there's the island north of Maui. And, like, most of the time, it's covered with cloud. Like, not covered, but the top of it. You can't mm-hmm. see the mountain top of it because it's covered with clouds. Mm-hmm. And, like, they just hang out. it's just because it catches all the clouds that come across the ocean. And then it's rare that you can see it, like, openly. So, it's kind of cool. That's how it creates microclimate. Just the terrain. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And it's consistent. Yeah. It is crazy. It's wild. Did you know that those islands really were volcanoes from under the ocean and then they just like surface? That's insane. And now it's an island. <laughs> it's crazy to think about. And it's just so lush. It's so great. It is so lush. It's everything's from, so like, vibrant and healthy. Because probably Humans are from sea the level volcano. sea levels rising though every year though, so watch out. Not this, uh, watch out. California is about to fall in the ocean, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> They've been saying that for ten years. Uh, hey, they're they're preparing for it. They're they're building up the beaches. They're building in the the little uh, cages cages in the rocks to keep it from breaking down because the sea level is rising. It is. <laughs> Two things I want to say. One thing. The first thing, real quick. The major earthquake. I don't know when it's gonna happen. Why but do it you will, keep saying that? It will happen soon, or not soon, but once. It's bound to happen. It's it's gonna be a big one. It's gonna be a big one. Just check me out. This so what are you gonna do? You S- live here. Thank you. Second thing, great <laughs> transition, Ray. Gregor, what do we need in our emergency kit, killer? <laughs> yeah, what the heck? Now I'm like worried. <laughs> Ah, doomsday! No. <laughs> like all our bongs are gonna fall off the shelf. <laughs> yes, all of them will break. All of them are done. All, all of them will break. Can we not have them up there? So I was thinking of an idea I'm of how to. Now. I'm gonna do some woodworking and like. Have but them, it like, could just, come to put them in a box. They get, they get build stole. a box instead they, of a shelf. You have to build a box. Why don't we just put them in a box on the ground? There's, that's they're still gonna break. Yeah. The whole ground. Uh, Unless we have like, little cubbies for them to have padding in them. Yes. <laughs> that's a little ridiculous. Yes. No, you could do it. Pretty big. It, it would have to be on the ground. Because what if it never comes? And we just prepare like these crazy people on doomsday preppers no. and it never happens. Let me, let me go on another little rant. <laughs> oh. This is me and gun laws. I'd rather have it and not need no, it I know. than need it and not have it. It's just ridiculous to build padding for all of your bongs that are earthquake proof. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? <laughs> I'd rather them just all break and I have to get a new one. But it stinks. That would be heartbreaking. Right. right. I, I don't think you we would We adapt work. though. Right, Lee? You wouldn't worry about your bongs if the whole house is fucked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You, you would be I know, tripping balls. But this isn't my house. Yeah, but if you're indoors, you'd be freaking out. All your I shits. Know. I'm it's crazy. Now. By the way, I woke up from the earthquake. He didn't. Nope. I haven't felt one yet. I woke up because I literally was. I woke up terrified. I thought that someone was like breaking in my sliding glass door, or it reminded me of like a hurricane when you can hear the <laughs> the windows like. <laughs> Yeah. Howling or like a train going past me or That's something. scary. Fuck and I was that. like so alarmed. I was scared to death. And then like 10 seconds later, I was like, whoa, it ended. So I was like, was that an earthquake? Yeah. Dude. Just that's... searched it on Google and everyone was tweeting about it. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. That's crazy. And that was the day I got back from Florida and I was there for Christmas vacation. <laughs> and it was just like the bomb cyclone or like super cold. Like it was snowing in parts of Florida. And then in New York, people couldn't leave their houses. They'd open the door and it was a wall of snow. When was this? Like January. And then we had an earthquake here. Wow. It was like, quote, a little one. Like it wasn't like a big one, but it woke me up. I think I was in class. I was like, oh my god, my first earthquake. What the heck is going on? <laughs> what do we need in our emergency kit? <laughs> oh man. From guns and ammo. Water. Water, Fuel. MREs. How big is this kit? What Fuel. does it look like? Where do you take it? Do you take it with you? You take it to Walmart with you every day? The work? What do you what? I would say Is it strategically located? I would, say, I would your house? say to have two go bags. I still need to build mine, so I mean, it's a work well, in progress. Well, you should have a box of your valuables like that you would never want to lose at home. Tell me this. Tell me 
Secondly, tell me your dream go box. And first, tell me the general population go box. Uh, Which are the general <laughs> population? Oh, Lord. Um, okay. They have should one have, pistol. Should ha- okay, so one pistol. I would get a Glock, something dependable. Um, that's what I have. I got a couple Glocks. I got uh, both 9 millimeters, uh, Glock 17, Glock 19. I would get a, at least a Glock few. Boy. A they few, better pay us for I this would shit. get a few Glock. thousand Glock. rounds. Glock. I would get Glock a few boy. thousand rounds. It's not going to be that much. A few hundred dollars uh, to get a few thousand rounds. I would get probably like 10 mags. And then um, yeah, this like, is ridiculous for an average. No, 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 no. Stop no, no. the apocalypse! No. And maybe a no, no, no. Is it, this is not that much. What the fuck? This is not that much. I know, but some people can't just no. Not just but do this that. is this is needed in case if anything happens. In case it's zombie apocalypse. If you're if you're on your own, you don't understand. You're gonna need to you know. You're good. You're good. You're gonna need to take out more than a few people, and you don't know how long it's gonna be until you can resupply or, you know. True, because people will be trying to steal from you. Exactly, and you wanna you wanna be prepared, more prepared, and better off than everyone else, so that you can wait out a storm. So ideally, if a pistol. Be. What else? So you can. <laughs> so a pistol, maybe a vest. For real, dude. I would get a vest. This and is then not. I a... would get food. I would get dried food okay. that can be heated <laughs> and boiled. You know, <laughs> zombie apocalypse kid. Ten... No, that's good. No, I know, but the general pop, I'm Quote, not too sure. Non perishables. Yes. Non perishables. Things that aren't gonna go bad. Cause Long you're... shelf life. Yeah. Sorry, keep going. My bad. I was Which just is laughing. not gonna be healthy food. But... Um. Well, it it can be nutrient dense. It can be nutrient dense <laughs> food. Uh, some of the stuff that we had in the Marine Beef Corps jerky? actually was pretty good. That had a lot of energy in it. Something that you need when you need to sustain. That has Nuts. a lot of calories. It won't be the most healthiest, but at that time of need, your body will absorb everything. It will, yeah, because you're burning through calories so much because you're already you have an elevated heart rate as it is, and so you're gonna have a higher higher caloric intake just for that whole situation, you know. Correct. Yeah. So okay, keep going. What else? Perishable food. Non perishable food. <laughs> you already got the guns and the ammo. You just want protection. Um, I would get rope. I would get a tarp, maybe a sleeping bag, some warming layers, uh, something that is uh, a nice pack. I would definitely get something uh, like what we had in the Marine Corps um, a sleeping mat so that you can sleep pretty much anywhere. And the tarp will be good if you're, you're out in the rain. You can build a small shelter with some sticks. Um, you know, we did it in the jungle all the time. So because my house just, is gonna collapse in the earthquake. Well, you, yeah, it could. This is this is if if California were to fucking go under and you were to have to run off in the woods or some shit. Go back. This is worst case scenario. Anything, anything. So it's anything good to happen. just have for earthquake and or anything worse. Somebody yeah, f- and you should also have a medical kit as well. Somebody freaking bombs us. You know what I'm saying? Like anything happens, natural disaster, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. This is your your grab, you're gone. It's got to be reachable. First, I would y'all say. scared me about my birth control earlier. Now I'm scared about a freaking bombing. No, this is good though. You should have it. It's it's a good thing to have just High like peace stress. of mind, like a savings account. You want this like insurance. It's like it's like personal life insurance. You're better off with these things. No, I agree. It is it is good, but like it's making me feel like I'm not prepared. I'm like not. That's a good. Safe. That's a real. Uh-huh. That's a reality feeling right there. I'm it's not good. prepared. I mean, <laughs> there's home invasions all the I'm time. Scared. There's home invasions all the time. I come here and I'm home alone. No, we're good on the home invasions. That ain't happening. <laughs> what? That's not happening. There's a rapist in no, Lincoln but Park. You gotta saying, hide the kids. We're just saying in anybody's home though. Like, you never know. Worst yeah. case scenario. Yeah. Ain't Dude. nobody breaking in this damn house with two Marines here. But I'm just like yeah. saying. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to gain fire superiority first. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Nobody knows that. <laughs> fire oh. superiority when you have more rounds going down range than the enemy does, and so you have their heads down. You control them. Yeah, yeah. for the time being, you're just yes. spraying and spraying, kind of. It's making me think like of paintball. that movie Zombie Land. Except not paintball. <laughs> <laughs> when all else fails, you have your kits. So, go bag. Run down a quick list. Boom. Drrr. Warming layers, med kit. Warming layers. Non perishable food. Med kit. Food. Uh, 550 water. cord. 
water, uh, containers for water, and sleeping, and uh, warming clothing, and waterproof everything, and uh, mm-hmm. light, maybe something to make a fire with. Warmth is always needed. Any any shortcut you can make, water purification tabs, uh, a water filtration device that is very, they're, they're so affordable nowadays. You should also get a camelback with multiple bladders. Um, and a sleeping bag, you're pretty much set. I mean, you're basically set to go long-term camping and withstand the weather as long as you kind of need to and with the tools necessary to to survive. That's mm-hmm. basically, you're oh. just preparing yourself for survival. And Good analogy. And if the Marine Corps taught you that, then you're fucking Gucci. But if it didn't, if the Army didn't, if the National Guard didn't, uh, I watch Navy, a lot of naked Air and Force afraid. didn't then that sucks and you got to learn. But, but Boy Scouts taught people <laughs> some shit, right? <laughs> Were you in the Boy Scouts? Uh, no. Cub I was, Scout leader? I was for a couple of years. but Girls can be in Boy Scouts now and boys can be in Girl Scouts now. I don't get now. it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what kind of confused society do we live in? <laughs> I'm what were we saying earlier when I was like, oh, yeah, well, girls have to take birth control and do all this other stuff. Like, why can't guys like what's something that's annoying? They all have to do nothing. And then <laughs> what would you say? Carter? You're like, you're upset with the way that you're born. <laughs> I, was like, I said, if, if you're upset with the way that you were born, then change it. <laughs> like, <fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's surgeries. Nah, Ray's not upset. She's just saying. Yeah. yeah no i'm not upset. no that sucks i mean i i feel bad because i mean sometimes as far like- as emotions and uh what chemically goes on with, with birth control uh, hormones all that hormone levels in in females is so much higher and and it fluctuates so much more often than the males does it's it's intense so it, must, it must be a empathy. lot i feel i do yeah i definitely do it, it's a lot to go through awesome. not with every chick though no <laughs> not, no not with every chick but it's definitely a lot there's some worse stone than cold it is savages. in guys they'll fuck you up for sure <laughs> but, but no inside maybe not biologically speaking yes speaking. physiologically yes. Phys- okay scientifically speaking <laughs> But if if there was a male birth control and it didn't fuck with your hormones or your impossible, sp- that's what it's doing. Sperm longevity or whatever. If it could somehow just, I don't know. I what don't do know. you think that does to females? Oh, like we no, take it, that so long. Like some of us probably can't even have kids after. No, for sure, it's not good. It's not good. Actually, Mind Pump just did a very in depth episode with a really good doctor in that field, um, and it's overall, it's not, it's not good it's not yeah. the healthiest there's a lot of things that pop up so yeah you're you're taking something that's man-made and your your body's adapting to that and then over time it your body's adapting to everything i'm like i don't want to take it like i but like it's it's stuck it's a you're stuck between a rock and a hard place right is that a, that's a good no, i said it right right I don't know. A rock and a hard place. Because, like, what are my alternatives? <laughs> Let me know. Listeners. What are the alternatives? Know. You know? Uh, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Abstinence. <laughs> Definitely. Abstinence. Uh, <laughs> condoms. Condoms don't always work, I don't think. I think the shot is the best. I think the It's still the shot with your hormones. That's so, I think so it is. fucking bad. It is, but... You know, if you can you imagine uh, that makes me feel like I'm like the Hulk or something. I'm like sticking my arm out there, like injecting me with like hormones, and I'm just like, uh, yay! Now I'm like good. Uh, like what? Then don't then choose abstinence. <laughs> <laughs> choose abstinence. I'm like why? <laughs> it's like that we sucks. want pleasure so much. Why does it have to come with consequences? Pull out and condoms <laughs> and. Yeah, there you go. That's the thing in this society. There's not enough consequences and too much pleasure and too much accessibility and convenience. To Ooh, that. that's true. There's not enough. There's not enough consequences. There's not enough struggle You're in the right. society. Life is too easy. Generally speaking. Generally speaking. I guess there's other ways to do things and not have kids, but I'm just. I'm sorry, I had to go off on that little <laughs> branch. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm just saying. I know. Believe me, life is tough. Even for the general American, but believe me, we have a, a lot better than a lot of other people in this world. 
if you're true. listening to this podcast on a phone, you're doing a lot better than a lot of people. But still, believe me, people go through their downs. And uh, I don't know where I was going with that. No, I agree. But sometimes, I don't know. Oh, consequence. Okay, excuse me. Struggle. So people were generally more happier in like the early 1900s and the mid 1900s because shit like phones and seeing what other people are doing across the country you couldn't see that you had no access you only had what was right in front of you and you were grateful for that most of the time um and people had struggle so they like they appreciated the more you struggle usually the more you grow from it right now i mean it's it's all variable but still Mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of struggle nowadays everything Mm -hmm. is so easy like, people don't even go to the grocery store. That shit gets delivered. Yeah. That's true. You know how to change your oil, right? Do you know how many people alone, much less much less females, I'm not sexed by any means, but much less females know how to change their oil, know how to freaking drive a manual? You know how cool that is? It's freaking cool. But I'm just saying there's not a lot of struggle in this in this world. A lot of things we've figured out how to have country. them done for us. Correct. Correct. And be careful if your job can be taken by a robot. Be careful. Ooh. Be careful. Ooh. What do y'all think about AI? Oh, I think it's man. crazy that on your phone you have to go into the settings to turn all of these things off because they just track like where you are and how often you go there and what you buy and what you think and what you listen to and what you say. And I it th- all goes I to think... Apple. <laughs> and they just sell it out to everybody. Like, it's so freaking crazy to me. Even Netflix, everything you do, everything is analytic and data driven. You're what you do, the analytics on you is the most valuable thing right now because it's because businesses will buy that from a company because they'll go, Oh, well, this is a good property because approximately X amount of people pass by it at this time of the day and blah, blah, blah. Right. I'm just saying based upon what you watch, what you listen, what you see, what you click on your likes on your Instagram, everything is data for these other companies to use. And unfortunately, most of the time we, we accepted it under our terms and conditions. Can we just delete everything? It's all in the cloud. It's, What's the deal? I mean, that's what I'm trying to move in the middle of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? But everything you've done up to this point that has been on the internet or sent, or sent across Snapchat or anything is still in the cloud. Is what I'm saying to you. Like, yeah. it's information stored on all of us as individual people in the cloud. That's crazy. It's, it's not just like right now, like wanna... what we say, it's what we've been doing, period. Oh, God, you don't want to see That's see what's scary. See my Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but let me tell you not to like. That's what's wild. Yeah, it is. Not to like freak I'm anyone scary. out, but like. I'm the, scared the this analytics... episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're going deep. We're going, we're talking real shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> You, you, you got mad at me, but I talk realistically, right? I don't, I'm, especially the people I love, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to sugarcoat anything. I want to tell people how it is to help them. Because that only, that's just, I don't know. Why, where am I going with that? Analytics, data, it's going to be used to advertise to you. That's pretty much 90% of it. 10% of it, yeah, like government or whatnot is going to use. I mean, probably not in a good way. Mm-hmm. I mean, China right now has cameras everywhere and like they have like a point what? system. Have you not heard about this? No. Every 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 citizen <laughs> in like China now is like under a point system. If you're a good citizen and all this kind of stuff, you get like more points. What if the... you fucking like miss like uh, DMV or, or like a court thing or whatever, it's like bad. Oh, man. Yeah. And if you're like stealing, oh, it's it's crazy. That seems like a movie. It's It literally is. It's scary to think like, like that. Like, yeah, what? But the data is going to be used mainly to advertise to you. You're going to... Everything you want, everything you think about, the type of music you listen to, the mood you're in, you're going to be advertised to. That's why I don't want to, my midlife crisis, I ain't going to have a lot of fucking electronics. I don't have but a TV in my room. But they're going to know it about you, Austin. You're too far gone. What do you, you mean? You can dip out, but they're still going to know I'm not gonna everything. Have service. I'm not going to have any of that. I'm going to go up to the top of the hill when I need it. Right, so what you're saying is you're going to just like close your eyes so you're not going to see it, but it's still going to be there. Correct. If, if I were to travel to SF right? in 2028 when this is happening. Have you seen that movie Passengers where they just fly to a different planet and it's like they fly and it takes them like 100 years or some shit? 
So everybody, like, <laughs> who's who's in that movie? I think I have seen Jennifer it. Lawrence yep. and um, yeah. and the Hicks. guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, that's GMO. That's cookies. crazy to me because that's kind of what I feel like the future could be. Is like we're flying to different planets and like everybody that you've known and ever loved is gonna die, but you're going to a planet that you won't even start on for another hundred and fifty years. We can't even take care of the one we're on. <laughs> what the fuck? We can't. Why how are we gonna go to another planet? No, I'm on another we can't planet. do that safely. <laughs> we can't do that safely. Yet. No, we I haven't. Know. We haven't come become. I'm just saying, that China far. and cameras and point systems and shit. That's what that that's sounds what's, like. What does the space force look like right now? That's what I want to know. I want to know specifics. What they're it's capable. It's all the government, probably. It's all the Illuminati that's going to be able to escape. <laughs> what? <laughs> they're way. Ahead, they're way ahead of what you can think of. Really? Yeah. Yes. Hmm. For sure, dude. What Bro. if space and all that's just to cover up? Have Who even knows? Have y'all heard recently about the Navy pilots finally opening up about talking about no. UFOs? No. No. Yeah, there's some like pilots that have just gotten out of the Air Force that have been in for 20 plus years. And they like somehow are what? under contract to talk about that. They're not under NDA. And they just been saying that, yes, they sightings have been prevalent. Because they fly like way out in the middle of the ocean just randomly fast. And they that's what I'm saying. Bro, that's aliens crazy. be creeping. Yum, 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 what yum. were th- what were they talking about? What, what did they see? Yeah, Tell me, please I more. I want to know. Here, more. You know, what? I'm gonna look it up right now. Excuse okay. the the random noise. <laughs> and uh, Gregor's packing a bong, please. <laughs> what what strain, buddy? Uh, you tell me. You saw me grab it. Is it the cheetah? Cheetah cookies. Piss. Whoa, easy on the words. Easy, <laughs> easy on the seats I'm and the kidding. bong. <laughs> And the words. <laughs> Gregor's going to be saying <laughs> easy on his bong. Easy on the bong. <laughs> <laughs> they make fun of me. Ray mentioned it earlier because I, a couple of times, they come in. Listen. Oh, man. I got some nice leather leather seats, right? And they're only Excuse in me. this condition because I be easy on them. I don't be slamming all my body weight. He's all over here like, like I live. keep my things nice, yeah. blah, blah, blah. He really just restricts movement on those right. things. I do low-key put myself in like a little bit of a chokehold <laughs> doing some of these maintenance things. I'm but su- you know what? They last for a long fucking I'm time. I'm surprised there's no plastic on the couches. You know, I got <laughs> I got multiple gray hairs already going. That's probably why. Oh my! You're gonna lose it. I want to know about this alien. Can I look it up on my phone yeah, or please, something? Yeah, please, please. I need to see aliens Where? in my life. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> You're silly. I hope y'all like this episode. What do I look up? Navy alien y- UFO sighting military. And see what the date is. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I really want a dog, y'all. Yo, so do I. I want Jack. So Jack. Tell us who's Jack. Jack. Okay. Oh that's my not, that's God, not he's beautiful. That's he's not he's a he's a pit bull. Is he a blue nose? No, dude, he's orange. He's a red nose. Oh my God. Look at the color. He's orange. He. I'm colorblind, so I think oh. he's, I think he's I think he's gray. Austin, what you said, I'm sorry, I have to just interject here with the alien business. <laughs> I don't. It could very well not be aliens. I'm just gonna read you this first sentence, this first like paragraph. The Navy caused a bit of sensation this spring when it implemented a formal process for pilots to report unexplained aerial phenomena, which most people call U.S. UFOs, after being accused in the past of not taking such reports seriously. Alas, for those who might be tempted to make the leap, such sightings are not evidence of life on other planets. No one doubts that the pilots are seeing something, but psychologists and specialists in aviation medicine say there are plenty of reasonable explanations for such sightings other than extra extraterrestrial beings. Hmm. Earthly sources of light reflected by clouds or haze, for example, okay. or optical illusions wrought by fatigue after staring. <laughs> the cockpit window for hours on end <laughs> no like it could be for sure but like i feel like i've watched some like planet earth type stuff where there is crazy like space explosions and stuff that happen that you see yeah and that's why independence whoa whoa that's, that's a, why i believe that, more Austin? in like another asteroid hitting earth and just dis- destroying it before you know like that kind of stuff for real. Do you think happen. we're Do you think we're alone? No. Ah. 
Do you think there's a Riddick the out there? Is? Think well, of how much of the ocean we haven't discovered. A lot. Think about the universe. Hey, we haven't even cured cancer. Like, I'm confused how that hasn't happened I yet. know, me too. Maybe we're not supposed to because our population is growing so much globally. Not going to be able to sustain life without renewable we energy can't even, sources. We can't even take care of our own planet. In the future, yeah. We're, we're already destroying this one so much. If we don't figure out how to have completely 100% renewable energy in the next, like, 10 years, it's really going to be fucked. Yep. <laughs> I agree. Look at all the species of animals that's gone. Bye bye, dude. I want to die of the Great Barrier Reef before Just it's Just proves like that gone. humans are the top of the food chain. There you go, Ray. Hit this little bong diggy dong. Ray, what's your favorite strain ever? <sighs> right before she hits that. I don't know. <laughs> that's a hard question. That's a really hard question. Like you should just say, "What's your favorite strain right now?" Maybe. What's your favorite strain right now, right? But I mean, right now. <laughs> That's a hard question. <laughs> right now, I would probably say California Dreams. What I is like that? The vibe what is that? that? It's an OG. You're an OG. It's Mac crossed with Dosido. And I really like Dosido, but I think it's kind of overdone sometimes. So I liked it crossed with Mac. It's a good hybrid high. I feel like I can smoke a joint and be productive and I'm in a good mood and I'm happy and it has more of the like traditional OG type taste. Yeah, it does. Big time. I definitely think Dosi from West Coast is bomb though. And the Purple Punch because there are some strains that are overdone. You're right, but theirs is really good. Yeah. Like a lot of strains that get too hyped and too many people be growing it and it just, I don't know, the quality of the the strain goes down, definitely. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's it's nice to diversify the the smoke, especially when you start smoking something and then you keep smoking the same strain. You kind of get used to it. Then you, I don't know, it's... Yeah, no, you definitely get used to, I mean, anything, like anything you build a tolerance to, right? Yeah. That's why people will, like... They don't understand that even with cannabis, your tolerance will go up. So if you're using this medicinally, your dosage might increase over time. Um, that's just your body getting used to it. That's why also if you can do a tolerance break, do it. Um, but yeah, it's all about balance. But yeah. Yeah, sometimes I'll do a, I'll do a tolerance break. Sometimes I'll take a like three to maybe like a seven day off period where I'll just... I mean, I'll... I'll do everything that I normally do, go through my routine, but I'll really concentrate on getting sleep. I'll really concentrate on putting in 110% effort into all my workouts so that I know that I'm going to sleep really well. And I, I keep the routine so that I can get good REM sleep. But um, during that time, I can, hopefully I can still get good sleep without smoking before bed because taking a tolerance break, I don't want to smoke. At, at all for at least like seven days you know yeah i feel that right i'm getting hangry <laughs> me too ray forces and an thirsty. end to the episode because she's hangry and high and there's the <laughs> <sighs> i hope y'all like the episode is way different from what we usually do yeah way more litty titty yeah <laughs> 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 oh, <God. laughs> oh. <laughs> as right, always y'all. hope you guys enjoyed the episode we definitely mm. wanted to include some more growing tips because we know you guys enjoy that let us know Hell what yeah. else you like yeah we love the feedback please we invite it um as always at America's Podcast, at Broccoli Bay. 420. 420. At Double OG Man. And at Perform Hire. Hell yeah. Stay Say hi, see. friends. <laughs> Stay classy. We're lit. It's out. We went crazy in this episode. <laughs> <laughs>